The Jovian Sayings, number 418. To a politician, nothing is more important than choosing one's foe well. If one chooses a man too strong for oneself as one's foe, one will be in mortal danger. If one chooses a small man as one's foe, one will become small oneself. If one's attention is fixed to a false foe, one won't be ready when a real foe appears. When one destroys all visible foes, there will arise an invisible foe within one's bosom. Miriam Han. On coming to power, Timothy Goldstein, 2773 to 2895, president of East Ganymede, began to persecute Chris Herman, who had competed with him in the presidential election. In a long article titled, One Good Foe is Worth Ten Friends, in the Jovian Gazette, Miriam Han urged Goldstein to desist from such attitude and instead regard Herman as a proper foe. She pointed out that a political leader should choose a good foe and supported her argument with examples from history of the East Ganymede. Our history after the division clearly shows this point. President Mistral Chow regarded the crystal group that split off from her Democratic Party as the most menacing foe. So, she did not clearly recognize the threat posed by the ambitious military in an economically distressed society and was ousted from presidency only two years after her election by the July 17th military coup. President Jelly Pelletier, a no-nonsense professional soldier, did not broke any opposition. To him, all opponents were people who opposed for opposition's sake and who were no more than objects for political engineering. Unfortunately, without any foe outside, there appeared a foe within. At the epogee of his political career, Pellier was assassinated by his intelligence chief, who he had trusted with political engineering. Miriam Han, 2821 to present, is a historian and has taught at the Galileo University. Renowned for her knowledge and insight in the history of Ganymede, she wrote many celebrated books, including The Adventurous, 2878, The Political History of Ganymede, 2879, and The Cultural Landscape of a Frontier Society, 2885. Number 465. The gravest problem humanity faces is evolutionary crisis. Humans succeeded in subverting the traditional evolutionary process, but so far failed in devising an alternative evolutionary strategy. Rufox 1224, Reynard. Rufox 1224 has a knack for presenting an issue people would rather not think about in a palpable way. The quoted passage is from Our Tomorrow. The gravest problem humanity faces is evolutionary crisis. Humans succeeded in subverting the traditional evolutionary process, but so far failed in devising an alternative evolutionary strategy. I cannot think of a crisis more serious than this one. The fundamental entity of all the species originated from the old earth is genes, not organisms like human individuals. The survival and propagation of genes is the ultimate purpose of all living creatures, and organisms are in essence gene carriers. The sieve of natural selection ensures that individuals are optimized to the propagation of genes. For instance, Germ cells that participate in reproduction have great privileges not granted to somatic cells, and individuals are designed to be fittest during the time of reproduction. Once the period of reproduction is over, the individual's bodies rapidly lose vitality. So there is no divergence of genetic interest between individuals and species. In the case of Homo sapiens, the emergence of high intelligence and the rise of civilization had fundamentally changed the situation. Thanks to their high intelligence, humans became self-conscious and invented the concept of self. Unsurprisingly, they came to devote more and more resources to the welfare of their selves, and the prosperous civilization provided them with the means to do so. So there arose a conflict of interest between the individual's self-indulgence and the species' genetic prerogative, and the individual is winning, 
as always.